Hi, welcome to Microsoft Build. I'm Nick Kramer. This is Microsoft Teams APIs and Microsoft Graph. If you're not familiar with Microsoft Graph, it's the REST endpoint that unifies the different Microsoft properties across Office 365 and other Microsoft properties into a single SDK and a single developer experience. And Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork in Office 365. It allows you to communicate using chat, meetings, calls, to collaborate using all the Office properties, including SharePoint files and Excel and OneNote and Planner and Calendar and the full breadth of Office 365 integrated into Teams. Microsoft Teams also has a rich customization experience, so you can write apps inside of Microsoft Teams, which we'll talk more about in a minute. And across Teams, you get that enterprise awareness that you're used to from Microsoft. Teams provides a powerful platform for building applications, including ability to build tabs, bots, connectors, actionable messages and cards, messaging extensions, and of course, graph APIs. Graph APIs can be used with all of those other different models. So you can have a tab that calls graph APIs, or a bot that calls graph APIs, connectors that call graph APIs, et cetera. And you can also use those graph APIs outside of Teams. So use graph APIs in your website to manipulate Teams data. Use graph APIs in your services, or even graph APIs in your command line tools. One of the powerful things you can do with those APIs is automate the life cycle of your team. So you can create a team, and then add members and owners to that team, add some channels to that team, uh, configure the team's settings, post a welcome message to the team, and then let your users party on that team. And when they're done, when the business issue that is tied, you're tying to that team is resolved, you can then go ahead and delete the team. To that end, we have a bunch of APIs today to do that. We have access to the team resource. We let you uh, read, write, add, uh, remove, and update, and delete those, as well as enumerate the teams that, are, that a member has. We have APIs for manipulating membership, adding and removing people to the membership list, adding and removing people to the owner list, and also enumerating who those owners and members are, and getting additional information about them, such as, uh, what their full name is, their email address, their user picture, et cetera. Team settings is another one of the things you can get access to, both reading and writing the settings of a team. Channels, we have full ability to add, read, update, delete your channels, as well as enumerate the channels in a team. And you can post channel messages to those channels. Let's show a demo illustrating that. I'd like to show you a little application from Contoso Airlines. Contoso likes to create a new team for every flight they fly and put the pilots and the air crew and the ground crew and the air stewards on that um, flight and on that team. So all the people that need to work together are in one team making it happen. On their website, first thing you need to do is log in and provide your graph credentials. And then you get a list of flights that are flying out and the magic create team button. And let's walk through what that does. First step to creating a, a group, or creating a team is creating a group. We're gonna set up the parameters that we want here. Display name, mail nickname, description. Those are also what are displayed for the team. You need to specify group type is unified. Mail enabled is true. Security enabled is false. You don't want a security group. You want a Teams group. And finally, your favorite visibility. I used private here, but public visibility is good if you want people to be able to add themselves into Teams. And then we need to do an HTTP call, just like standard REST stuff. I have a little helper method here called call graph that does all the standard HTTP things. It's a thin wrapper around HTTP client. First. We serialize the payload into JSON format. Then we set some request headers, set an accept header, set an authorization header, put the body into the request, 
and then actually send the request through HTTP client. Then we process the response code. It's a success. We move on. And so the next step is going to be to put a team into that group. We have a group. We need to put a team in there. And we're going to specify a payload that has the settings for the team we're about to create. And when we created the group, we got back an ID. And that's going to be useful for our subsequent calls. So I could specify a blank payload and say use all the default settings. But here I'm going to specify a couple settings that I want to override. I want to override whether guests can create and update channels. I want to set that to false. And I'm overriding whether guests can allow deleted channels, or allow, are allowed to delete channels as well. And then I'm going to use all the defaults for all the other settings. And when we do that, we'll have a team. A team with no members in it, but a team. And the next step is to go through the flight roster and add people to that team. So my database has the flight crew listed by, universal, by user principal name, UPN. Graph likes to work in object IDs. You need to add an object ID to the member list. So our first step is going to be to translate that UPN into a ID. Fortunately, there's a graph call for that. Slash users slash UPN will give you information about that person. And then we just pick out the ID field out of that. Then we construct a payload that we can pass to the membership list. odata.id equals blah, 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 slash user ID. And then we call slash groups, slash ID, slash members, slash dollar sign ref, post to that. And that adds the user to the membership list. If we want to then add them as an owner as well as a member, we can do that as well with another call to the slash groups, slash ID, slash owners instead of slash members. And pro tip, for performance reasons, it's best to do this through the beta APIs right now. Uh, we recently did a lot of performance work to make the uh, adding members really zippy in the Teams client. If you use the V1 endpoints, it will take its time showing up. If you use the beta endpoints to add the user, that user will show up very quickly in the Teams client. So seen one user, we've seen them all. We can skip over the rest here. Next step is for us to create a channel. And again, we need to a couple, put in a couple settings. In this case, just the display name and the description. And then we send that rest payload over. And we'll have a channel. And finally, Let's put a little welcome message into that mess into that uh, that channel. We're gonna post a message to this URL slash groups slash ID slash team slash channels slash channel ID slash chat threads. And we'll put a little body for our message in there. Welcome to flight 210. And when we do that, we're gonna get ourselves a nice team that's pre-created for running your flight. You can see flight 210 with service to Dulles has been created with pilots and uh, has a nice welcome message from us. Now I want to talk about what we're looking at next for the product. And I wanted to get your feedback on this. For automating team life cycles, we're thinking about introducing a feature for archiving teams. When you're creating new teams automatically at a rapid clip, a new team a day, those teams pile up. You can very quickly create a mess. Now, one solution is to delete those teams as soon as you're done with them. But that means you can't go back and read the previous day's team. Another possibility would be an archive concept where we put those teams into a read-only mode and hide those teams, make them harder to get to so they don't clutter up your list of teams, but still make them accessible through a menu. That's one feature we're looking at and would like your feedback on. Another is application permissions. 
The team's APIs and graph today support what's called user delegated permissions where the application runs with the permissions of the person logged into it. That's great as long as you have a user logged into it, but if you're running a service at the stroke of midnight to look at the flights for the next day, you may not have a user logged in, in which case application permissions can be really handy. A third scenario that we're looking at is adding apps and tabs and bots into Teams. So providing APIs for adding those things into the Teams you just created. A final thing that we're looking at is getting the ability to read channel messages as part of building out that messaging theme. So there's a couple great talks that I recommend for everyone at Build. Uh, Build has a lot of great talks, but two in particular. By Andrew Bybee and Larry Jinn, Build the Ultimate Team Hub with Microsoft Teams will tell you all about the Teams platform, not just the graph portions. And Ina Arenas will tell you all about Microsoft Graph, the full breadth of graph across all the different products that contribute to the Graph API set. So get started building your Teams app today. Go to graph.microsoft.com. Let us know what you're doing on Twitter. If you have feedback, send us a tweet. Uh, check out the samples on, on GitHub. Post your questions to Stack Overflow. And please, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.